everyone, welcome back for our third pattern of the Mini Makes Crochet Along. It is being hosted by Clover USA and myself. Earlier we made a mini ornament. That was our very first pattern. I saw tons of really adorable modifications that you made over on Instagram. And it's just so crazy how just by changing the color or the hook size and your yarn, you can make so many variations of a simple ornament. And our second pattern was our mini donut. Uh, this reminds me so much of like the classic Dunkin' Donuts color. You just need like one with orange frosting. So we're tossing those two and setting those on the side. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on our mini paint palette and paintbrush. For this pattern, you will need some light worsted yarn in white. And here I am using Hobie Friends Cotton 8-8. And you will also need a variety of embroidery threads in brown, yellow, blue, green, and red. You can choose whatever colors you have on hand. Um, we're going to be using two different hook sizes. The first one is our 2.75 millimeter hook. And then this will be the first and only pattern that we use our smaller 1.5 millimeter hook. And these are amazingly strong. It really allows you to work with very fine threads. UHU glue is going to be very essential for this project. Um, we've kind of seen it in the first two patterns here and there, but you will absolutely need it for this one. And if you've never worked with tiny hooks like this before, this is going to be an amazing project to start that and to challenge yourself. And I hope that you'll pick up a new tip or two. So let's get started. With my white yarn, first we're going to make a slip knot and then chain six. Tighten this loop around my hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first chain to join the loop. Now that we have joined our loop, we're going to single crochet around the loop 12 times, not working into the individual chains. So go into the center, the little hole there, and then single crochet around that, including the little, the little tail from our slip knot. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now that we have twelve single crochet stitches around our loop, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. Round two, we're going to chain one, and that's going to count as the first stitch, and single crochet into the same stitch. Then we will increase in the next stitch. One single crochet, and two single crochets, that'll make one increase, and we're going to do another single crochet increase in the next stitch. One and two. Then we're going to do a half double crochet increase in the next. So yarn over and go through the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You should have three loops on your hook and pull through all three and do that again in the same stitch. So yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull back out until you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Then in the next stitch, we will be doing a double crochet increase. And so for a double crochet, you will yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull out so that you have three loops on your hook, very similarly to a half double crochet. But this time you're gonna yarn over and just pull through the top two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over again and pull through the remaining two loops on your hook. 
This is going to create a taller stitch than the half double crochet. And what we're doing essentially is creating the wavy lines of our little paint palette. So it's not a perfect circle. There's like airplanes going by, our neighbor next door is vacuuming. So <laughs> I apologize for any of the background noise. I'm just gonna make my second double crochet stitch in that same hole right there. And then we're going to make three treble crochets in the next stitch. So a treble crochet is similar to a double crochet. We're just pulling out all the different stitches in today's pattern. You are going to wrap your yarn around your hook once, twice, so that you have three loops. Then you're gonna go into your stitch and yarn over and pull back out. And now you should have a total of four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the top two. Yarn over and pull through the next two and yarn over and pull through the last two. So we're gonna do that two more times in the same stitch. So again, wrap your yarn over your hook twice. So you have three loops, go into the stitch. And I, I think it helps when you use your index finger to hold those loops down, that way they're not sliding all over the place. And then yarn over and come back out so that you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the top two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. And yarn over and pull through the last two. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time in the same stitch. So yarning over so that I have three loops. I will go into the same stitch and you might have to kind of wedge yourself in there at this point. Pull up a loop so that you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the next two loops. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So this is where you can really tell a huge difference with the kind of hook that you're using. Um, with these Clover Amour hooks, you can see that the head is kind of pointy. That really allows you to get into the stitches without splitting your yarn as often. So I definitely find that I reach for this hook most often because my other ones are a little more rounded on the top and it does make it harder to work on things this tiny. We're gonna do three treble crochet stitches in the stitch next to the one we just worked in as well, but I'm gonna go a little faster. You're welcome to rewind and rewatch how I did the previous stitch if you'd like. Um, but let's go ahead and work three treble crochet stitches. So yarning over twice, going in, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Yarning over twice, going in, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Yarning over twice, going in, and pull through two, pull through two, oopsies, and pull through two. So you can kind of see it's starting to look like a seashell almost. It's really pretty. Next, we're gonna make two treble crochets in the next stitch. So again, oopsies, let me undo that. Yarn over twice, go into the stitch, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and again. That is it for the treble crochet stitches. And now you are an ex expert at them. <laughs> half double crochet into the same stitch. So half double crochet is yarn over, go into the stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. When you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is in the same stitch, don't forget that. Then we're going to slip stitch into this stitch right here. So just the stitch next to it, we're going to slip stitch into. So then after that, we're going to pull up a short little loop and fasten off. We're gonna weave this little tail in with our yarn needle. This back loop that we crocheted over, it has been secured down so we can go ahead and cut it short. So I'm gonna weave my tail in this way, going counterclockwise just about three or four stitches over. So one, two, three, four, five times. Yeah, that's about three stitches. Then you can cut your tail short at the end. Okay, 
and there we have our little palette. Now comes the fun part. We are going to switch our 2.75 millimeter hook out for our 1.5 millimeter hook. It's kind of cute that they're both yellow. And we get to make our paint globs. So I made mine in our primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. I'm gonna make another one to match this one, but you can choose whatever colors you want and have fun with it. For each of my paint globs, we're gonna start off with a magic circle. And I'm gonna make my circle a little bit smaller here so it's easier to grab. Okay. And single crochet six times, just like if you were making any regular circle. One, two, three. I'm using my X-shaped stitches yarning under still for this. Four. Five, oops. If you split a little bit, don't be afraid to go back one step. One, two, three, four, five. This will be my last one here. Okay, now that you have six stitches, just go ahead and pull on that center. And we are going to use the invisible finish so that we can make this a perfect round circle. So I'm gonna set this aside, cut a short tail, and pull my yarn through. It's really teeny tiny, so let me see if I can demonstrate how to do this again. So go from back to front, and then Grab your yarn tail and pull all the way back, like so. Okay, and then with the same yarn tail, we're gonna go into the last stitch in the back loop only, and then pull that yarn tail through. And that's gonna create our faux stitch right there. If I hold it between my fingers, you can see that that is a really nice circle. What we're gonna do with the back now is you can go ahead and tie the tails in a knot and cut it super short. Why make more work for ourselves, right? We're not gonna sew these down because that would be pretty hard to do anyway. We're just gonna add a tiny dab of fabric glue. And I'm just gonna demonstrate the whole step first. Um, and then I'm gonna leave you guys to make the other two circles on your own. So with my fabric glue, what I'm gonna do first is glue down the tails. We're going to add a little dab and then just kind of wrap the tails over on it. That way they're not sticking out when we place this onto the palette. I definitely think having my tweezers for this job makes things so much easier. And I'm just gonna place it right over here. You don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna evenly space them out so I am thinking I'll have the red one here, and the next one here, and then the last one here. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and make two more circles in any color of your choice. And meet me back once you have secured everything down. Welcome back everyone. So we just finished gluing down all of our paint blobs and I do wanna pause and offer you an alternative. There's a reason why I didn't offer it in the very beginning and that's because I wanted you to give yourself a little bit of a challenge and see what you might be capable of. You can always cut out circles out of felt and that'll still create a super cute effect for our crochet along. So don't let this stop you. So let's go ahead and move on to the little paintbrush. All right, and for the paintbrush, we're gonna start off with brown embroidery thread and our 1.5 millimeter hook. The first thing we wanna do is create a magic circle. So I'm gonna do that. I found it's a little easier actually to make it, make my magic circle around one finger instead of two. And please excuse the dried glue on my fingers, fingertips. <laughs> There's actually a reason why I don't wear polish anymore, and that's because this glue does take it off. Um, but now that we've had our, we've got our magic circle, let's make six single crochet stitches in the loop. So one, two, and 
pull it a little bit to make it smaller. Three. My thread just wants to separate on me. Whew. Four. Five. Uh, give me a minute. I'm keeping it real here. This is what you might experience too, so I'm not going to cut that. <laughs> and six. Double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay, we're going to close that loop. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. Okay, and crochet over your tail. So this yarn tail, I'm gonna tuck in front of my hook once it's been inserted. So slip stitch. Okay, let me get all of the threads around my hook first. Got one more. All right, and then pull through. Then we're gonna chain two. So one, two. Then we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. Again, going over our tail. One. And two. And what we just made right now is the little paintbrush tip, the little point of our paintbrush tip right there. Okay, and then lastly, we're gonna slip stitch in green yarn. Okay, so we can go ahead and cut off that yarn tail here and slip stitch in green yarn. So I'm just going to wrap it around my hook and pull it through like so. Now we're going to continue onto the brush handle and we're going to chain eight in the green. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then starting from the second chain from the hook, we are going to make seven slip stitches down this chain. So slip stitch. So we're going to pull through and try to keep your tension as even as possible here. Um, every loose stitch is going to be super visible with something this small. It'll be really hard to hide, I mean. So it's great practice. If you find that you need to undo it and redo it, totally okay. I don't want us to get frustrated when something doesn't come out perfectly the first time because, you know, that's not how anything works in the world, right? This is all about improvement, no matter what level you consider yourself to be. And now what we're going to do is just slip stitch back into the paintbrush and then create a little bit of a tail. And the last thing that we have to do is trimming down and, and weaving in all of these tails. How I'm going to do it is I'm just going to take this yarn tail here and tie it with my brown tails. Just be sure to tie into the other green tail too. All right. We're going to trim them really short. and just secure this little area with some fabric glue, some UHU glue. This makes a really fun, cute prop for your amigurumi dolls. When completed, it'll look something like this. And with our paint palette, it looks oh so cute. You can even secure the brush directly onto the paint palette itself, and that way you don't have to worry about any of the knots that you tie on the back side. I think it's so adorable together. So here I have Gertrude the Grumpy Chick. She is also a free pattern on my blog, and you might have noticed she's also my little logo. And when she holds this little paint palette and brush, they are the perfect size for her. I just feel like there's so many possibilities of what you could do with these tiny little mini makes. They might make your photo shoots a lot more interesting and fun. Uh, there's really so many possibilities. I hope you enjoyed this challenge and if you found this tutorial helpful, please be sure to subscribe and comment. 
Stay tuned for the fourth pattern to be released in our Mini Makes Crochet Along next week. Happy crocheting!